Right, so now that it's all installed, let's check out this Wallbox Quasar. So now that it's all installed, the vehicle to grid setup is ready to go. Um, the first thing we're going to have a look at is this Wallbox Quasar unit. So the Wallbox Quasar unit is a lot different to your average domestic EV charger. Most domestic EV chargers rely on the car to do the AC to DC conversion. So normally all that's uh, in the charge box on the wall is some, you know, a, a tiny amount of electronics, um, but it's not doing any conversion. However, this is a DC charger. So it's going directly into the battery and it's not using any of the electronics inside the car to convert from alternating current, which is what comes into your house, into DC current, which is what the battery needs. So in this box, you can see just behind this cowling, this plastic cover, is a huge piece of metal. Um, this probably most likely aluminium, um, which is a heat sink. So this thing, is, this thing is, is designed to dissipate a lot of heat which is involved with the AC to DC conversion. Now, what that gives you is the ability then to control the whole charge process from this box, which is why this unit can do this vehicle to grid setup. Now, the unit itself is uh, quite pretty looking. Um, it has a display. You can't really see it very well in daylight, though. And then, of course, it's got this massive CHAdeMO connector. Now we've mounted this on the wall um, and as you can see here it's got two great big ports for the battery and then the other two ports are for um, commands and, and data, data traffic. What we'll do in a minute is we'll plug it into the car and then I can show you what it's like to use uh, with, the, with the app. So of course we're using the Chadamo connector. Normally I'd be using this connector if I was using the Zappi unit that we've got over there. And So the car's now going to talk to the Quasar unit and what I can do now is have a look at the app. And when I open up the app, I get the option not only to start charging, but also which direction I want the charge to go. So either going into the car or going out of the car into the house. So if I start the charging up now, Should see this light come on. There it goes. Now that fan noise you can hear is something I wasn't expecting on a domestic charger. And that is another indication that this unit is probably going to get quite hot. However, I think a fan could have been found that is perhaps a little bit quieter, especially in a domestic setting. So I think this unit might be problematic for us on this trial because of the noise and the fact that you know we live in a fairly well built up area here and other people might not want to, to hear that when they're um, you know, sleeping at night. Um, I think the peak times that we'll be using this through the trial though will be when most people are making dinner. So I think what we'll do is we'll have the car plugged in on this unit to participate in the trial, but actually uh, if we want to charge it at four o'clock in the morning on the Octopus Go, the cheap tariff, then we, you know, we might have to see how much noise this thing starts to generate because I think as well as trialists giving the feedback, I think neighbours of trialists might start getting the feedback um, from this fan because it is quite noisy and I, I'm very surprised that the fan isn't bigger and slower so that it actually makes less noise. It sounds like it's quite a small fan in there which means it has to spin very quickly and therefore that's why it's making so much noise. So anyway we're now charging the car and what I can do is I can drag this dial and I can drag it all the way round into the negative and what that means is the car is going to go from charging to discharging and it's as simple as that so the app makes it very easy to 
change what the car is doing at any one time, either pushing power in or taking power out. Now at the moment this is only going to be controlled by the Octopus Energy app and we'll do another video on that once that's all working, they're still getting that set up. But for the moment we're just using the, the Wallbox app and therefore there's no intelligence in it, it's just me literally moving the dials and uh, ensuring that everything's, uh, you know, everything's where I want it to be, which clearly is a bit too manually intensive for you know, everyday use. Now the other thing that's, that surprised me about this setup is actually I can't now disengage this charge. That is fully locked into the car and even if I get my remote out it's still locked in. So the only way I can stop this car charging and get that plug out is to actually use this app or go into the garage and cut the power to the Quasar unit. Now I was a bit surprised by this I must say because I'm used to a situation where I can go to my you know cars on the driveway here when they're charging on the Zappi unit and I just press the button and it releases it no matter what's going on. So that's a very interesting experience and you know it could mean that we're in a situation where if we get any problems with the app we have to you know, resort to drastic measures of literally flicking the power off to the unit in order to release the car. So um, I would have preferred a, a button somewhere on the, on, on the Quasar unit there just to kind of you know, it, enable us to stop, stop the charge, even if there was a code that we have to put in to stop you know, malicious uh, you know, people coming along and, and, and stopping charges. So what we'll do now is we'll just close that down We'll press pause and we're sending the pause command everything's stopped now red light's gone off on the unit which means that I can now go in and release the cable so that's it that's a quick tour of the wallbox quasar unit now I was quite surprised by some of this stuff um, obviously this is the first, this is like the first use, the first few days. We'll see how all of the software gets developed. But I thought I'd just give you a quick show around the unit. Not many of the people will have these chargers, but for those of you who are thinking about this kind of technology, I think the big thing for me that comes out of all of this is the fact that that unit is doing that DC AC conversion or AC DC conversion depending on which way the energy is flowing and that generates heat and that needs cooling and that needs a fan even though most of that thing looks like it's made of a great big dot of aluminium so I think if these things are going to take off in, in people's homes and stop their homes sounding like they're going to take off they need to think about how they're going to cool these things because you know in the summer when people have got their windows open they're not going to want to hear a whole bunch of these units you know going uh, you know going at full pelt because they're pushing energy into the grid so you know that's my initial thoughts of it this is you know we've not started using it yet this is just my initial thoughts on a few little test runs that we've been doing but you know hopefully that's interesting for you and um, if you want to learn more about this check out my other videos on vehicle to grid um, they'll be coming uh, thick and fast now as we get into into this uh, into this trial fully um, and we'll step through each of the different things that we've got going on here. So I'll do another video about the, the stuff that we've got inside the house and how we're also monitoring it with the My Energy setup that we've got here in, in the home. And we'll do some videos about the Octopus Power Loop app and stuff like that once that starts to come online, which should be in the next few weeks. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all of that jazz if you really want to, though the other buttons work fine too. And we'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.